So it's the Monday of Holy Week. This week when we remember Jesus coming to the climax of his ministry, Jesus coming to the place where his death would be the substitute for sinful people to bring the hope of life. And so as you share this Holy Week with us, uh, help listen to the story as we tell it through Luke. We're going to be reading today about the Last Supper, which is from Luke chapter 22 and reading from the seventh verse. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house where he enters, and say to the owner of that house, The teacher asks, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfilment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you that I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And then he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. So the Son of Man will go, as it has been decreed. But woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now, one of the names that God has in the Old Testament is the name Jehovah Jireh, which literally means the Lord will provide. It was first used by Abraham in that famous story when God asked him to sacrifice his only son Isaac on Mount Moriah, despite having told him that through Isaac, he would have and father a nation that would be as numerous as sand on the seashore. How would that be? Well, Abraham didn't know, but Abraham had the faith to trust God enough to do the unthinkable. So he simply did what God asked and was about to sacrifice his son Isaac. But just then, God provided another sacrifice, a ram who was caught in a thicket nearby. A substitute was provided by God so that the sacrifice that would give life to Isaac could be made, even at the very moment that he was about to die. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And that's a fitting description of the God who rescued his people out of Egypt at Passover too, by providing a sacrificial lamb to take the place of the death of a family in the moment of judgment. God provided the sacrifice so that the condemned people could live. The Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. So God provided the sacrifice to save Isaac. God provided the sacrifice at Passover to save his people. And here was Jesus now at Mount Moriah at the time of Passover, at least traditionally. That was the place the temple had been built. He arrived on the donkey, as we remembered yesterday, the site where he was teaching every day. But now he had to his teachers, disciples and us what the fulfilment of God's provision would actually be. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Now, of course, for an itinerant preacher, he had no home in which to celebrate the Passover like everyone had to do. The city would have been packed with pilgrims. Everybody would have had every room rented. So no small task to ask uh, for a venue to host a band of at least 13 plus hangers on. And yet Jesus says, follow the water carrying man and he will take you to the owner of a house 
who will have a guest room for us to celebrate Passover. Unexpected, unheard of, and yet when G Peter and John followed Jesus' word, they found the Lord provided Jehovah Jireh. So the disciples, they shared the Passover together with Jesus, a lamb sacrificed so that the people would live. But here, Jesus doesn't follow the tradition. He wasn't looking back to the Exodus, which is what Passover is all about, a past redemption. Rather, with his disciples, he's looking forward to a fulfillment, to something in the future, to a God-given purpose yet to be revealed. He says to them twice, I will not eat or drink this again until it finds its fulfillment in the kingdom of God. What was that fulfillment to be? What was the Passover pointing to? What was Jesus' purpose? Well, God was providing not a moment that forged a nation by saving them from slavery, but now a moment that would secure redemption, freedom from sin and death forever. How would that be? Well, Jesus himself, of course, is the fulfillment of that Passover lamb slain. He is the one who is the substitute for a condemned life. Just as God had provided at Mount Moriah, so Jesus himself was God's provision for the sacrifice. But this sacrifice, this fulfillment, needed new symbols. Symbols so foundational that everyone across the world could share with them. Bread and wine, they weren't a special meal. They were the basic foodstuffs of the day. Yes, bread, staple diet for every across the world, everyone still. But drinking wine was a lot safer than drinking water in Jesus' day uh, because by being brewed up, it was safer from contamination. So Jesus takes the most common place of symbols and reminds the people of the fulfillment of his purpose. He takes the common place to a moment of glory. Jesus' coming kingdom, his perfect rule, was now going to be discovered by faith. In a new moment, in breaking bread, this is my body given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And in poured out wine, blood red, this is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. That was utterly outrageous. It was such an outrageous moment. It was the moment that triggered that long prophesied moment of betrayal by Judas. And he goes off to betray Jesus. But what's really so outrageous about it was not that Jesus was overthrowing the nation defining centuries old traditions or even proclaiming his new kingdom. The real outrage is in two of the words Jesus repeats. The words for you. For you. The divine son of God, the Messiah, king of his people, the fulfillment of God's word. He was the sacrifice that the Lord provided to save them and us. Jesus' life was given for you. The Passover under the old covenant called for the death of an innocent lamb in the place of a guilty people. But this new covenant is sealed with an ultimate innocence, with a perfect human who had never sinned, who was from God himself. And in his sacrifice of his own life, he would bring life to his people. This new commitment of God at the cost of his only son was the ultimate sacrifice. An infinite glory and perfection was provided as the only hope to humanity's ultimate radical rebellion. And all the created order could justly cry out, we're just not worth it. Look at us. We are not worth the life of the Son of God. And yet the Son of God shouts back at us, I love you. This is for you. My death is for you. There is no one so far fallen or damaged by sin or despairing of life that the message of Jehovah Jireh is not for you. The Lord has provided the sacrifice. In him, we can be free from fear, have the hope of a new death-defeating eternal life, because Jesus is the lamb, the Passover lamb slain for us to give us life. Jesus is the one whose life and death and resurrection is for you. The Lord has provided 
He has provided us the way to walk in. So let's put our trust in him and celebrate his glory in this Holy Week. Let me close off and lead us into a moment or two of prayer. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you that you have valued our worthless lives so much that you have sent your Son in his perfect, glorious life to take our place, to pay the price of our rebellion and of our reluctance to love you. Thank you that we can never deserve it nor repay it, but receive it by faith and grace. And thank you that it transforms us so that we may see our world differently and have in a world of frustration a hope that the world cannot give. And so we celebrate his gift of himself in the name of our Saviour Jesus. Amen. And God our Father, in this Holy Week we do pray for the time to pause in life's pressures and stresses to remember the depth of your love. Thank you that wherever we are, by your Spirit you are with us. Thank you that you never leave us alone, even when in other ways we're isolated. Thank you that our life is so precious, that you are the one who holds it in your hands forever. So in this week, Lord, we pray for the space and time to remember you and to come again to the foot of the cross and celebrate with Jesus the gift of his life. And we ask it in his glorious name. Amen. And Father, we pray and pause for a moment to remember those who are serving us in the hospitals, the doctors and the nurses, the ambulance drivers and all the healthcare professionals, and in the emergency services, the police and the fire service. We thank you for those who are putting their lives at greater risk for the sake of serving us. Thank you that uh, we see echoed in there, willing to lay down their selves in the service of others, something of your desire for our lives. So give us opportunity to be grateful to those who do that. Give us opportunity to um, serve them, to make their life that bit easier. And we pray for their protection and for their help at this testing time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for those known to us, our neighbours, our friends, our family who are on their own, who are struggling to keep persisting with the pattern of life, being apart from the people they love. Lord, we pray for grace to be sufficient for their weakness, for hope to transform their sorrow, and indeed for light to shine in the darkness that they feel. May you bring us back to the foot of the cross to look again in awe and wonder at a love which will never let us go and help all those who are feeling their isolation to find the support and care of friends. So in this moment, we pause, Lord, and by your Holy Spirit, open our hearts to think of those who we know who are on their own today. By your Spirit, bring their, their names to our minds and help us be ready to respond as we make phone calls, as we make contact, as we provide the link, the blessing that you know that they need. So, Lord, we pause as you bring to our mind the names of those who are, we know who are in particular need. Father, be gracious to meet the needs of those we've named and use us to be part of the answer to their prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let's bring our prayers together as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you for listening. I'll leave you with some music to reflect on the Lord's Supper.
Reminds us you are. 